The president and co-founder of the investment firm BlackRock is actually worried about inflation, although potentially not for the reasons that you might expect. So this is Rob Capito. He was at the Texas Independent Producers and Royalty Owners Association Conference, which is an industry convention for oil and gas manufacturers. You know, it's just a wild bunch, they're crazy guys. So he had this to say about inflation. For the first time, this generation is going to go into a store and not be able to get what they want. And we have a very entitled generation that has never had to sacrifice. I would put on your seatbelts because this is something that we haven't seen. Now, he didn't state what generation he was referring to. It could plausibly be one of four at the very least. But he said that many people who had always had everything available to them at the supermarket would soon face scarcity inflation. The consequences of shortages in anything from workers to oil, housing, or silicon chips. And just so you understand the context of the economic point of view this guy is coming from, he co-founded BlackRock, which is the world's largest asset manager. It has $10 trillion in client assets and investments across the global economy. So clearly he's a guy who's had to sacrifice a lot over the last few years. He would understand what he's talking about, Cenk. So, but John, that goes exactly to the point I'm gonna make. So. It's a point I make a thousand times on the show, but related to this, I think you'll see how why he says what he says. The hardest thing in the world is to escape your own perspective. So for this guy, he's incredibly wealthy. Almost everyone he knows is incredibly wealthy. So what he's saying about the younger generation, he actually means about his kids, and the kids of the other incredibly wealthy people that he knows. And about that, he's probably right. They've had everything given to them. They have a sense of entitlement. And so when all of a sudden the Gucci bag is not available because there's a chain supply issue in China, ironically. Um, then all of a sudden his son or daughter is like, oh my God, Papa, Papa, what am I gonna do with the product without the Prada bag? The bottom of my shoes aren't even red, Papa. What do I do? Right. <laughs> and so that's what he's talking about. And guys, I've seen this mistake by people that are wealthy, but not at his level, right? Um, they are constantly talking about how millennials and Gen Z are bombs, lazy, entitled, etc. And there is some truth to that for wealthy and sometimes upper middle class in that generation because they've grown up in such spectacular entitlement that they feel like, oh, why am I not the CEO? I've been on the job for two weeks already, right? But for the rest of Gen Z and millennials, which is the overwhelming majority of them, ain't nobody got entitlement. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the exact opposite. What entitlement do you have in Nebraska as a young person in America? None, none, you're lucky to get a job. At the at you know at fast food places because now they're paying eleven dollars or thirteen dollars before they were paying nine or seven right, so they don't live in the real world. So that's why they seem so out of touch because they are. Yeah, a hundred percent. You're you're totally right about the lack of entitlement. But also, let's address the other side of his claim, which is millennials have always had it easy. They not I honestly don't even know if he means millennials. Maybe he means Gen Z. Maybe he means Gen X. God only knows. The guy's wealthy and older. But um, the idea that they've never had to sacrifice, they've never had it hard is only like you can only make sense of it through the lens that you just said that he's talking about, like the the kids of friends of his that come on to their yacht parties or something. I, I don't know because that is not the experience of the people that I know. And I am assuming virtually everyone watching this can attest to the fact that sacrifice has been a through line for their entire life. Um, in a number of different areas that we talk about constantly in the show, especially including the massive decision you need to make when you decide, am I gonna try to get a college degree? The thing that Apparently you need to have to have any chance of making significant money. Certainly you're told by everyone, it is your duty, your obligation to do that. If you're not gonna be lazy, if you're gonna go, that that's what you're raised and told. And so then you have to decide, am I gonna go 30, 40, 50, $100,000 in debt to roll the dice and have a chance of doing well? And as a result of that, there's a massive student debt load. You can see in this chart right here, millennials, have over $500 billion 
in student loan debt. Gen X has over 600. In fact, when you break it down to the most amount of student loan borrowers, millennials, it's it's millions and millions of individuals. And then for literally decades after that, even if you're lucky enough that you finish college, that it actually produces a job that you can make more money on, you are then going to be burdened by that debt for the rest of your life. And easy paths to economic prosperity, like buying a home incredibly cheaply, which might have been possible 30 or 50 or 70 years ago, that is not an option anymore. Buying at all might not be an option. And so you then have to sink all of this money into rent. There are so many additional burdens that these dinosaurs have no clue about and no curiosity to understand. It's that it's why people in these generations that he's targeting are constantly being insulted by those who already made it through a system that was set up with far fewer obstacles. And now on top of the obstacles, you also have the establishment spitting in your face at every step of the way. So, and there's a great irony here because it was the income inequality that they created that created a giant difference in these generations. I'm talking mainly about millennial and Gen Z, where 10% of them are the most entitled spoiled little brats you'll ever meet in your life, okay? But 90% of them are desperate for any kind of a job or super hardworking and, and, and totally screwed over, right? And part of the reason they, they're hungry and they work hard and they're fantastic is because they're in such dire straits, like they're like literally trying to survive. And who rigged that system? BlackRock rigged that system. By the way, a guy who said something very similar is Joe Biden. Joe Biden rigged that system. Joe Biden said, "Oh, what do they have to worry about? Oh, they've never had it so good. Yeah, Joe, your kids have never had it so good. The kids of BlackRock executives have never had it so good. The rest of the kids have never had it so bad. There's never been this much student debt. Housing prices have never been this high. The rules have never been rigged so much in favor of the rich and against the poor and the middle class. So that's why these out of touch elites in at the Capitol, like in the Hunger Games, with their ridiculous get ups, go, go around going, oh, I can't believe how lazy everyone is these days. No, you're all unbearable. And I'll give you one last thing on this, guys. If you hear them talk, the way to decode it, is just for one second step into their shoes. Imagine you're super rich and then their language will start to make sense to you. And that's the same decoder ring that I use for Ben Shapiro. It doesn't make any sense to the average person, but if you're you know, spectacularly wealthy, then Ben Shapiro does make sense. He's like, oh, we need this society needs to encourage risk taking if we're entrepreneurs and that's really the number one priority because we've got to encourage people to put those millions of dollars into work. <laughs> Who's got the millions of dollars that they're putting to work, right? And so their assumption is always from the point of view of a rich person as opposed to a, a normal person. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.